All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about box plots, and box plots are a good way to summarize data sets because uh, they provide more information than just a measure of center and spread, but less detail than a stem and leaf display or a histogram. It provides information about the center, the spread, the symmetry, or the skewness of the data. And it's not based on the mean and standard deviation, it's actually based on um, the median and interquartile range which we can find using the five number summary. The five number summary is essential to making a good box plot. So we have the minimum, the first quartile, the median, the third quartile, and the maximum. So, um, let's set up a little plot. So, we see that the f I've organized this distribution and I've sorted it from smallest to largest so let's increment by tens so start at zero, zero. now um, let's move this over to the side still see that cool so we know that our minimum is one and our maximum is 110 but don't plot anything on your plot yet because you don't know if the, this minimum and maximum are outliers yet. You need to find the inter interquartile range first. Uh, the next thing that I think we should find is the median. The first quartile and third quartile depend on the median, so finding the median first is a good idea. So since we know that there's 25 numbers in this sample, we should count 12 from the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then this number should be, oh, this number should be our median. 34. Cool. Now, what quartile 1 and quartile 3 basically are? are in terms of quartile 1 it's the midway point between the minimum and the median for quartile 3 it's the midpoint between the median and the max so we know that there's 12 numbers between 1 and 34 since there's 12 numbers and 12 is an even number we know that our average or our uh, median is going to be the average of the two numbers in the middle so let's count off from 5 from either end to find the two numbers in the middle. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right there. So the two numbers in the middle are 22 and 22, and the average of those is simply 22. Now let's do the same thing for quartile 3. Count off 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this number. One, two, three, four, five, that number. So we're left between 47 and 48. So quartile three should be 47.5. Cool. So now we've got our five number summary. We still can't plot anything because like I said, we need to find our outliers. So our outliers depend on something called the inner quartile range, which is also known as um, the value you get when you subtract quartile one from quartile three. In our case, 47 and a half minus 22 is um, IQR is 25.5. Now that we have that, we can determine if we have any outliers. So a mild outlier is 1.5 times the IQR added on to quartile 3 or subtracted from quartile 1. So you can see how outliers can be on either side of the main part of the box plot. Then we have extreme outliers, which are known as 3 times IQR, which you add on to quartile 3 or subtract from quartile 1. So let's find what we would have to add or subtract from either quartile. For a mild outlier, mild, it would have to be um, Q1 minus 38.25 or Q3 plus 38.25 and for I'm trying to get these off the board for an extreme outlier move it up a little bit extreme 
it would be quartile 1 minus 76.5, quartile 3 plus 76.5. So now we can find the ranges, 22 minus 38.25, that you end up with a negative number. So since none of our numbers are negative, you know that you don't have any mild outliers on the left side. Using this logic, you can also assume that you don't have any extreme outliers on the other side, because this will also be a negative number. As far as mild outliers on the other side, uh, 47.5 plus 38.25 is 85.75. And since we have some values that are larger than that, you know that you have some mild outliers. But you also have to make sure that you don't classify mild outliers as extreme outliers, which is 124, which is greater than all the values, so we don't have any of those either. Now that we have all of this information. It's kind of a long process. Um, what I would start off with doing is putting a straight line through where the median is. So it would be somewhere there. Yeah, a little closer to the middle, right there. Now what I do is I move to the left to the first quartile, so 22, it's here-ish. Then I move to the right to the third quartile, 47 and a half. And then we connect these and we make a box. Look at how nice that looks. And then what you do is you draw the whisker. That's why these box plots are sometimes called box and whisker plots. So the whisker should be to the most extreme observation that is not an outlier. So since we've determined that um, we don't have any outliers on the left, we can draw all the way to one. Put a dot. there and then draw that whisker and the largest value that's not an outlier to the right is the small uh, the value that's smaller than 85.75 which is 65 so 65 oh, draw 65 there we go now here comes the mild and extreme outlier Although we don't have any extreme outliers, if we had extreme outliers, we would denote them with a circle that is not uh, filled in. And mild outliers would be denoted with a circle that is filled in. So kind of like you're decreasing the amount of area each time you move further away. That's how I like to think about it. Because you start off with a filled in circle with mild and you get less area as you move out. So, um, we can see that 87, 95, 100, and 110 are all outliers. So, 87 is here somewhere, 95 is there, 100, and 110. And you just made yourself a box plot. That's how, I want to say simple, but they're pretty long process to get there. Ooh, it's the end screen. Click on one of these links to be directed to that playlist. And don't forget to subscribe!